What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today we're going to be testing out cheap paint versus expensive paint. We're going to see how much difference there is between the two, especially when it comes to durability. So what we've got here is some crayons, pencils, coffee, we've got cooking oil, grease marks, scuff marks. Let's test it out and see just how much difference there is. Let's do this. Alright guys, so we've got a standard piece of drywall sheet or plasterboard sheet. It's the exact same thing, just different name depending on the country that you're living. We're going to compare the paints cheap on this side here and expensive on this side here. So first things first, we're going to get some primer on here. So what we're using is British Paints 4-in-1. This one here is a primer, sealer, undercoat and stain blocker all in one. We're going to apply the primer to both sides, that way we've got the preparation needed before we get started in painting. Alright guys, so let's have a look at the two different paints that we're using while we're waiting for that to dry. So the good quality paint that I'm using here is Taubman's Endure. Whenever you're looking for good quality paint, the price is always a good place to start. Generally speaking, the more expensive the paint, the better quality you're going to get. Um, but in saying that, most top grade manufacturers um, produce and sell both lower and higher quality paints. So sometimes they're under the same brand might be under Taubman's or under Dulux and sometimes they're completely rebranded and you wouldn't even know that it's from the same manufacturer. So the price is always a good starting point. Whenever we're having a look at um, higher grade quality paints, I always like to use a Taubman's Endure or a Dulux wash and wear. I find for interior paints they're very very similar in terms of quality and also price. So price is important when purchasing your paint, but you pretty much get what you pay for at the end of the day. Most people don't realize the overall difference um, there is between cheap and expensive paint when you're painting a whole house or a whole room. So let's take a quick example. We've got two four liter tins here. Four liters is a gallon of paint. The more expensive side, we're paying about 70 to $80 for a tin, and then the lower side, we're paying about 20 to $40 per tin. Now, when we look at a room, uh, a painting a whole room, four liters you'll be able to get a whole room painted two coats and you'll still have paint left over so the overall difference isn't really that much when you look at it in that way however when you want to compare just the difference in terms of paint we've got here twenty dollars versus eighty dollars four times the price it might be a little bit scary initially but when you calculate it over your whole house or the whole project, there's really not that much difference in how much you're paying. So something else you can look for is any kind of warranties, um, guarantees that the manufacturer makes. Um, also any kind of information here. We've got eight um, protective features that this paint has. Generally with the cheaper paint, I know this one here, I've taken off the uh, labeling of the cheaper paint. Simple reason for that is I don't want to target any brand in particular. So with this one here, you won't find any of that information. It'll pretty much just say, low sheen, interior uh, walls, and um, water-based paint. So it'll give you a basic description. If we have a look at this one here on the back, hopefully this one here will focus for you guys. Um, but what we've got here is a lifetime guarantee. So we've got a guarantee on any kind of blistering, bubbling, anything like that, any kind of defect, uh, defect sorry, from the paint itself. So you'll find on the cheaper one, you won't come with any kind of guarantee or warranty like that. Um, and that just shows that how much confidence they've got in their product itself. So another thing we can look at is the actual paint itself. So if we have a look at the two paints side by side, we've got the more expensive paint here on the right. And on the left, we've got the cheaper paint. If we have a quick look just with the brush, if we move that paint around, you can see how nice, thick and creamy that consistency is. Even if I let that drip off the brush, you can see it just drops down slowly. When we compare it with the cheaper paint, it's very, very watered down and runny. So if we have a look there, that is extremely runny and that makes a huge difference. I'll try to do the two side by side and you can see the difference there. 
that makes a huge difference when it comes time to use these paints whether you're using a brush or a roller makes a huge difference you're going to get a lot more spread out of the good quality paint it's going to be a lot more user friendly um, at the same time you're going to get a lot better coverage and you're going to get less splatter when using the roller so overall the more expensive paint is a lot better quality but let's test it out now that we've got this applied to our new surface we'll test it out and see just how resilient the two paints are all right guys so the paint is now dry and we're ready to get started on our testing something you might notice if you have a look really close you can see all the little bits of hair that's come off the roller the reason for that is because i've used the cheapest roller that i could get my hands on it costs about three dollars for this roller but i'll leave that for a different video and we'll compare cheap versus expensive roller and see how much difference there is between the two now if we have a look instantly here as i rub my hand on the cheap side you can hear and I can feel just how rough, coarse, and chalky that side of the paint is. Compare it with the more expensive paint. It's got a bit more of a finish to it, nicer, smoother consistency. And as I rub my hand from the cheap side over to the expensive side, I can definitely feel a difference in the thickness of the paint. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go find a few different items around the house that will get common marks on the walls. Alright guys, we've got every worst nightmare possible here. We've got some crayons, pencils, we've got coffee, cooking oil, scuff marks from shoes, and even some grease. To make things worse, I even used a heat gun and we cooked everything onto here. Hopefully your walls aren't this bad at home. This one here is obviously an extreme example, but we're going to test it out and see just how much difference there is between the two. What we're going to use is just some clean rags. We've got some water on there, nothing else. We're going to start off on the cheap side, give it a quick wipe, see how much of this comes off, and then we'll start scrubbing and see how much of this actually comes off. Then we'll try it on the expensive side and we'll compare the two. So with a quick swipe, we haven't really got very much of this content off here some of the coffee starting to come off slowly but it's really baked on there what i'm going to try and do now is actually scrub so we're going to start off down here where the grease is and that seems to come up okay let's work our way around to the coffee stains cooking oil and you can see there the transfer of color as well so we've got some of that white paint starting to come off now this has been sitting here for about two days now so the paint shouldn't be coming off pencils crayons are definitely not coming off and the pencils seem to be smearing so you can see there we've got a smear of color i'll get in a little bit closer and i'll show you guys in a second we'll give it the benefit of the doubt go again once more All right guys, so let's have a look here. We'll start off on the grease. There's still a little bit more grease left over. Once we move over to the scuff marks, scuff marks are still present. Very hard to get rid of those scuff marks, especially when we compare it with the expensive paint. I really had a tough time getting that color to transfer over from the shoe over onto the wall. So that was a good thing. We can see all the coffee has completely seeped into that paint. So it'll be interesting to see if the same thing has happened on the other side. Some of those pencil markings have started to come off. Um, but what we find is it's starting to smear the color around. So we can see here that the surrounding um, area around those lines is starting to be pink now from where I scrubbed it. And the crayon. 
crayons are really having a difficult time to come off. So let's try it on the other side and we'll see if there's much difference. And this time around on the expensive side, quick wipe once again. And we can see with one wipe, most of that, um, the grease marks have actually disappeared. The coffee is actually starting to lift up off the paint. So what was interesting is this hasn't actually seeped through the paint as yet. And I did use a heat gun on both sides, so nothing has actually cooked right through that paint and seeped through it. So it's got a good type of barrier on here. Let's keep going all the way through. The only thing that's transferred so far is just the coffee. So that was basically with a wipe. Now let's turn this over and we'll give it a bit of a scrub and we'll see if there's much difference. So let's start off down on the grease section. So you can see the grease is completely gone. The coffee is completely gone, which is very interesting. This side here seeped right into the paint. So let's try up on the top now with the pencils and the crayon. Pencils and crayon are definitely not going anywhere. So we've got the same problem on the cheap and the expensive side um, with, with the pencils and the crayons. However, with the grease and the coffee and the shoe marks, we've got a clear winner here. So let's have a closer look at the expensive paint here. All the grease marks, oil stains, and also the coffee stains have completely disappeared. Very, very happy with this side here. The scuff marks from the shoes had a really difficult time transferring from the shoe over onto the wall, which is a good thing, especially when we compare it with this side here. You can still see all the coffee and the scuff marks everywhere here. Like I said initially, you could feel the difference between the two. So this one here is a lot more chalky, which means it's more porous, and therefore we've got permanent stains stuck in that paint now. This one here on the other hand obviously has some sort of protective um, barrier built inside that paint, and the manufacturer did also say that it is more resilient to stains and scuff marks, so very happy to see that these ones here did come up. On the top we've got our crayon and pencils, really struggling to get these ones here off on both paints, cheap and expensive. I think that's to do with the fact that these are oil based and I'm trying to use water to clean this up. So all in all, this is the finished product, cheap versus expensive. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give both these paints the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to take that rag, give it a good scrub, um, put some elbow grease into it and see just how much I can really get these two paints to come up to scratch again. So we'll test it out and see just how well we can get these two paints to come up. So after about 15 to 20 seconds of continuous scrubbing on the expensive paint, I've managed to get those pencil marks off, so very happy with that. We'll try it again on the crayon and see if that's all it needs, just a bit more elbow grease. And I think that's going to have to do it guys, the only way I'm removing these stains is by removing the paint. You can see here the transfer of colour from the wall over onto the rag, that's not what we want at all. I can almost see the primer now from underneath and if I wipe my hand over the top, that's what's happening. So I think we've got a clear winner guys, I'm going to leave this up to you guys, let me know in the comment section, cheap versus expensive, it's up to you guys to make the decision now that you know exactly what's going on, as always like, comment and subscribe, until next time I'm Bill, thanks for watching Bill's Out Too.